The key to doing it all is not doing it. <laughs> Everyone, I hope you're having a good day. Today, I just wanted to give you some practical tips if you feel like you have a lot on your plate and you're trying to balance. One thing that I hear a lot is, I don't see how you do it all. And the honest answer to that is I don't. I don't do it all. I feel like I do any more than anyone else is doing. I just have a YouTube channel where I talk about what I'm doing. And if you sat down today and you started naming all of the obligations you have on a daily basis, you would ask yourself, how am I managing all of this? But like Michael Scott, somehow I manage. So I'm just gonna give you 10 things to keep in the back of your mind. They're not gonna all work for you. Pick one or two that do. But first, a, just a little recap. Um, I'm Lydia Sin. I make videos on frugal and simple living. I homeschool my four kids, I work, and I'm a full-time college student. And I know that sounds like a lot because it is. But again, if you listed everything you did on a daily basis, it would be a lot. So how can we effectively manage our time? One of the things that I do is to make a schedule every day unique to that day and I do it the night before and sometimes I do it in my notes app sometimes I do it like on the back of a envelope my favorite thing is this little notebook that I got from the Dollar Tree and it's just a little schedule like hour by hour schedule that starts at five and ends at one why did they do it that way I don't know um also my daughter has drawn in this Ah, I laugh. Um, but every night before I go to bed, I jot down what my plans are for the next day because every day is different. And I do keep a Google Calendar with my block schedule in it, but physically writing things down or typing them out helps me remember. And because no two days are alike, making a schedule unique for the next day is really important to me. It helps me stay on task. Um, and that kind of flows into my next thing, which is prepare as much as you can the night before. If we're going somewhere early the next day, I'm packing lunches, I'm packing snacks, I'm packing things to keep small children occupied in the car. Um, if there are a couple days a week where we have long waiting periods for extracurriculars, and so I got a little travel soccer goal, make sure I get that in the car, take scooters so I, we can scooter on down to the park while the brothers are in karate. Um, make sure that we're just our clothes are laid out and that we have a game plan breakfast for the morning. So I run my schedule kind of on a weekly basis rather than a daily basis and I know different things that need to get done during the week and I find a place for them. And so setting weekly goals is much easier than thinking I have this long to-do list that I have to do every single day. Which kind of also leads me into focus on four areas. And I talk about this all the time, but if I'm trying to keep a house and work and do everything else, something's going to fall by the wayside if I don't have like regular rhythms and routines. And so I have four things to do every day. Unload and load the dishwasher, one load of laundry, sweep the main area of my house, and know what we're going to have for dinner. And that just makes life so much easier. And that kind of leads me into creating a routine, having those structures, that framework for our life in place. It does not have to be rigid. It does not have to be minute by minute, hour by hour by the book. It's just a routine. And if the routine kind of gets off balance a little bit, we have enough structure and security in that that we could just pick up on the next thing. I talked about this multiple times, but back in August, I randomly got vertigo. And I've not had it since, but it was so bad. Like every time I sat up, I felt like I was going to fall over. Um, but because my older kids had a good routine, they knew what to do, to what, how to get up, how to get started, how to get going with their day, while my little ones just came and got in the bed with me. And so once I felt better, I was able to get up and we were able to carry on with our day as if nothing had happened. It was scary though. And hallelujah, it has not come back. <laughs> Whatever, I always lose count on these. Prioritize your tasks. Not everything needs to have the same level of importance in our lives. And that's actually something I struggle with. Like everything feels like it's the same level of importance, but it's not. Um, 
And if I were to flip the camera around, you would see that the state of my living room right now is not what is important, but my kids are gonna be home soon from their nighttime activity, and we're all gonna clean it up together because we all made the mess together. And it's all about just catch and release, like catch the things that matter and let go of the things that don't. What do I need to hold on to and what what can be put off until later? And picking up the mega blocks off the floor, that can be put off until later. Utilize some time management techniques and this channel is all about time management techniques. You'll, you'll find some videos on that. But one of my favorite things is one, if you're not sure how long a task is going to take, time it. Get that timer out, that stopwatch out on your phone and see how long it takes. It doesn't take as long as we think it does to throw something in the crock pot or unload the dishwasher or send a work email. Sometimes we put off things because we think it's gonna take so long when it doesn't. And have you heard the two minute rule? Okay, if you have two minutes and the task takes two minutes, just go ahead and do it. And there's so many little micro tasks that add up throughout the day that only take two minutes. But I also utilize the timers in my phone. So I, <laughs> I have time blindness like you wouldn't believe and I will think, oh, we've got half an hour. We've got two minutes before we have to leave. And so I need a timer to tell me, okay, everyone, get your shoes on. Did you brush your teeth today? Okay, let's go. Or a timer to say, hey, take dinner out of the oven so you can cook it so you're not like trying to thaw chicken at the last minute. Or a timer for returning phone calls, a timer for returning emails. It's like the nurse's station of a labor and delivery ward up in this house with all the timers going off. Be flexible. Having a sense of humor and a flexible spirit is gonna get us so far in life. And knowing, you know what, this didn't get done today or the morning hasn't gone the way that we've started, it's gonna be okay. We can start over at any time. We can just go in our room, come back out and pretend that that part of the day didn't happen and pick up and carry on. Having a spirit of flexibility is kind of the counterbalance to a stressful season of life. Take care of you. Nicole Waters talks about protecting the asset and how you're the asset. And one time she was off somewhere, she got really sick, she texted her friends and her friends said, are you protecting the asset? Are you taking care of yourself? Are you making sure that you're well enough to do what needs to be done? And so that means going to bed on time so that we can get seven or eight hours of sleep so that we can function the next day. It means getting up and getting dressed for me, getting up and getting dressed in the morning and putting on a little bit of makeup and just putting forth some effort. It's not vanity, it's reminding me that I am worth taking care of because I have abandoned myself for years. I had abandoned myself for years and I'm undoing that. And so making sure that I'm taking care of myself, I'm going to the gym, I'm trying my best to eat well, I'm making therapy appointments if I need them, and I'm not worrying about things that are outside of my lane. It is hard for me, but it is delegate responsibilities, and I don't have a lot of people to delegate to. I don't have childcare. Um, my parents keep my daughter one day a week for me, but they are out of town literally half the week. They split their time between me and my sister. And um, I don't, like it's hard to find a babysitter, it's hard to find reliable childcare. And so when I outsource, I outsource to things like getting my groceries delivered or knowing that toilet paper and shampoo and pull-ups are gonna come once a month with my subscribe and save. It's um, maybe using a meal planning service, you know, that delivers those meal kits to your door if you need to, or swapping childcare with a friend if you have one. All, all my friends have had babies. That's not an option for me right now, although I will hold your baby. I'll pay you to let me hold your baby. Right. Um, there have been a few things that have popped up recently and I've had to say to Jason, can you take care of that? I, I feel like that's, that would be a good thing for you to do. Or he'll say the same thing to me, like I'm not in a place where I can take that on right now. Can you maybe handle that responsibility? And just having those honest back and forth conversations because marriage is a partnership. And knowing when to quit, knowing when to walk away. 
is important. I have gotten off social media until after Easter. I have backed up on some responsibilities until after Easter. Like April 1st feels like a deadline in my brain and so I've basically turned everything that's not my education, my kids' education off until April 1st. I have just a few work responsibilities between now and then, but knowing you are a human and your time and energy is not a renewable resource. You do not have an unlimited supply of it. And so knowing that you have to say no, and if if people's feelings are hurt, oh, I hate it. But I find myself contorting to fit so that no one gets their feelings hurt and no one has to be disappointed. But then at the end of the day, the, I was disappointed. I was disappointing myself. I was running out of time. I was doing myself a disservice. And I had to tell somebody no earlier this week. And the amount of scripting I had to do with myself to, to like type out the text to say, I'm sorry I'm unable to do that for this reason. And then I made my husband read it. He said, no, that's very polite. But I still have that people-pleasing wanting to earn love and respect. It's a whole thing. We're not going to get into that today. But we don't have to do that. We can prioritize what matters and say no. And if people get their feelings hurt, that's a choice they're making. I don't know how to say that in a polite way. Okay, so <laughs> don't you want to follow advice from me? Probably not. Um, leave me your tips. Leave me a comment and tell me how do you handle it all? How do you do it all? You don't, right? Um, but share. This is a community. And thank you for being here. I appreciate you. And I'll see you soon.